Hello, everyone. Good evening. I am a, a, Dr. Alyssa Kewen, so I own Keep the Adventure Alive, and I'm so glad that you have joined us today. And I am with Mary, who is an amazing person, and I think you're going to find a lot of inspiration and motivation from her. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and have her just introduce herself and tell her, tell you guys a little bit about her and then we'll get into her story and lots of exciting things for, we're really looking forward to it. Oh, I'm excited to be here and I'm so glad to have met Alyssa. Um, okay. I'm a personal trainer and I have been, you know, I'm on social media and I found Alyssa because she posts so much information about arthritis. And personally, my story, as we'll talk about, I have lots of arthritis. <laughs> and so that's one issue personally. And as a personal trainer, because I've overcome my issues with, with arthritis, at least being able to move more, um, I have so many clients who say arthritis is what's holding me back. And I'm, I'm like, no, you can move. The more you move, the better you'll feel. And then I find Alyssa online, who is, that's exactly what her message has been in all of her posts is talking about, you know, keep moving. And so that, and then keep the adventure alive is just perfect. So that I reached out to her and that's how we came about meeting. Yeah. And so you are kind of all about keep the adventure alive and kind of what our whole message embodies. So can you tell us where you're located and then kind of what are some things that you like to do for fun? Fun. Okay. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. So I'm in Nevada, California and okay. north of San Francisco. And, um, you know, since I did uh, lose weight and began be becoming really fit, what's amazing is for fun, I can, I can do just about anything. Um, I have a neighbor who, who is training for a big hike. I'm like, well, I'll train with you. And I, I was able to because I don't hike very much. I hike a little, but now we're yeah. hiking long hikes, but I can do it. Or so another did you do the hike yet or no? Pardon me? Did you do the hike yet or no? She's training for a hike in the um in somewhere in Italy. She's going on vacation. Oh. Yeah, in September. So oh, it's wow. gonna be a really arduous hiking. So we're we're training with her on once a okay. week. Yeah, so that's an example. And, you know, I have a friend who has a kayak, you know, whatever it is, I yeah. feel like I'm active. I can jump on my bike. <laughs> yes. I'm strong. No, and that is so great. And I think that that is kind of, like I said, what we kind of embody at Keep the Adventure Alive because you want to have options. You want to be able to do these things that your friends are doing and do these things, you know, participate in order to, you know, be able to live your life how you want to. And so I know that we had talked a little bit previously when we had met about your story, which I think is absolutely amazing. And I know there are a lot of people in this group in particular who one have arthritis, but two are really kind of trying to navigate kind of where you're at, where you are, you know, doing what you want to, you feel strong, you feel good, you lost a bunch of weight. So if you could kind of talk to us about, let's start kind of in the beginning of kind of how you were feeling and what kind of kickstarted you to kind of catapult you into kind of where you are now. Well, as I, um, let me see, as a teen, I, this was pre, um, what is it, Title IX. So, I mean, I'm sorry to say I used to hang out in the mall and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> there, was, there was nothing for, you know, I'm sure there were things for me to do, but I wasn't raised with a really healthy lifestyle, healthy okay. meaning exercise. But I moved to California as a young adult and I was very active and took up jogging and all the things young people do to you know, stay active Yeah, and then had kids and hit middle age and uh, they got fitter. And I like to say, I don't like to, but I, the truth of it is I got fatter as they got fitter <laughs> <laughs> and I was driving them to practice where they, you know, they're getting all buffed up from swimming. 
and yeah. I'm working full time and raising kids. And okay. I just really didn't exercise, just stopped taking care of myself in most ways. You know, maybe I did a few, a little bit. So I gained weight over my 40s. I ended up having a hysterectomy in my 40s that might have affected my hormones. And then by the time I was in my late 50s, I was 50 pounds overweight and and I was very inactive. And I was humiliated because I'd never really been overweight like that. So then I sort of try to, uh, you know, I isolated and my life was, you know, so finally I had knee surgery. Then after that, it was arthroscopic. Okay. And after that, they said, well, really wasn't that bad of a meniscus tear, but you have really bad arthritis. Okay. And I went to a rheumatologist and the rheumatologist said, you really should, you're going to have to be careful what you do. If you're going to hike, don't go on hills, you know, because downhill, you know, all the, the, oh, yeah. you should avoid. And, but okay. I had this wonderful, um, regular GP, general practitioner, and she was very fit. And she said, I think you should try losing weight and building strength in your legs. So, uh, cycling would be a good thing. Okay. So, Gradually, you know, it's sort of a long story, but I ended up doing a spin. I took up spin, even though, but by then I probably had been doing, I started slowly doing a little yoga and okay. then Pilates. So over time, I, I just took baby steps. But I remember um, the first time I went back to the gym where I used to be a gym goer. Uh -huh. and and I went in the stretching room, which is sort of a way to hide, you know, and um, right, right. I would stretch like for 15 minutes because I was so afraid of hurting myself. And then I would go to the cardio machines and I would do like, OK, I'm going to do five minutes on the treadmill, five on the bike and five on the elliptical. And yes. that's where I started. OK. And it just. I think the key is that I took my time and I did it slowly. And well, that's another thing that makes me resonate with you because of all you, I didn't have anything on the internet like they did now, like they do now. Yeah. So, no, there's lots of information, which can be kind of a double edged sword because then you kind of have to weed through all the information and, you know, so that can be kind of a kind of difficult to navigate, but I mean, I think it's definitely the small steps are kind of what we get to because I mean, that's, what's going to lead to lifestyle changes because you have kind of embodied that small changes to a lifestyle change instead of, you know, working out, you know, all going as hard as you can for a month and then kind of tapering off and going back to how you were. And so small steps are the, I think one of the biggest keys. And then you're I mean, obviously kind of living that now um, because now, I mean, you have a, your own YouTube channel, you're doing all of these like, great exercises and it's just amazing. And so what kind of got you into, so you did become a personal trainer in your sixties. So what kind of made you take that path? Well, as I, as I got, as I lost weight and got fitter, um, what was amazing is that I started doing some strength training and not only did I lose weight, but as you know, you can lose weight and lose muscle, or you can lose weight, which is mostly fat. If you're doing exercises at the same time, you're going to maintain your muscle and lose the fat. And, you know, I had that really round middle and mm -hmm. my, oh, everything was round, you know, in my trunk, um, and most, you know, I see a lot of middle-aged women get there in that sort of rounded shape and and not be able to change to uh, sort of whittle away their size to, um, to, to really transforming 
my body in a way, not to, of course, I liked looking better, but I also, you certainly can move better without that extra weight around the Absolutely. middle. And we know that's, you know, really dangerous weight to carry. It so is. it was just so, it wasn't like, oh, she just lost weight. I sort of cha really changed so many things. And the more that I, I, the fitter I got, even my, my skin, everything just started changing. And in the meantime, I see my friends are aging. I mean, we're all aging. My husband reminded me today how I sort of <laughs> over when I walk. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, um, so we're all aging, but there, I'm definitely felt like I've reversed some of the effects, you know, and slowed them down. And um, so then I can move better. But anyway, uh, I guess I got off track. But the the point is, I had changed myself. And I felt so dra dramatically better about who I who I am and who I yeah. was. So I retired from teaching. And at 66, I became a personal trainer. And of course, you know, that was it wasn't easy to but I worked for got a job at a gym and then ended up working for gyms here in our county, Marin County, um, for about five years. And so, okay. yeah. And then it, um, it was only right before COVID that I ended up quitting both of the gyms. And then I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then because of COVID, I started teaching zoom classes and then, um, but I had an outdoor class going all along. So, okay. But, you know, just introducing people to strength training is my passion. No, that's awesome. So who do you typically work with? Like either in your classes or one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I would say to, what I aim to act, uh, work with is uh, people who are active uh -huh. and and who have, you know, some level of um, fitness so that they're, they're able to get up and down off the floor and, and do exercises that like squats or planks or, mm -hmm. you know, push-ups from their knee. And it, they might not be able to do them at first, but that's what we're working towards. Yeah. And so, you know, people are always saying, well, you should – work with this age group or this age group or these kind of people. But really I, I've had clients that are younger than, you know, my sort of target audience that right. it's really not age so much as uh, people wanting to change where they are and, and learn about strength training because a lot of people don't know much about it. Right. And that's kind of where we are kind of lacking and where that's definitely needed. Because, I mean, we know the benefits, the research shows the benefits, but to actually like live out those benefits, too, because I mean, I strength train all the time. Um, but to kind of have like those two ends of the spectrum, like, I mean, you look amazing. And <laughs> I mean, being in I mean, mid 70s, it's just like, I mean, it's super inspirational to actually see the results of strength training because we can talk about facts all day, but to actually kind of see what it's doing for your life. And I mean, it's, it's so important. Um, and so what does your typical like exercise um, routine look like? Well, I do... Um this these workouts in my garage we have two friends that come over my husband and i and another couple okay we do circuit kind of training um it's they've been bringing a barbell and weights and oh, nice okay we're doing i have all kinds of equipment in my garage a suspension trainer i have um all kinds of, you know, medicine balls and kettlebells and dumbbells. I just yeah. got a new bench today. So oh, we got that's exciting. <laughs> and that's um, exciting. so like now um, we've been doing a circuit during the, we've been working okay. out together for about six months Okay. And doing a circuit. But now we're on this program where we're doing this progressive weight training. And that's why they're starting to bring their, the heavier weights. Okay. We didn't. I don't have a lot of heavy weights here. So 
Um, so we were doing deadlifts with like, I, I started with 65 pounds, which uh -huh. is pretty good. And I'm, I'm going to work up to heavier lifting. I have the bench now. So um, like I can maybe I have 20 pound dumbbells. I might there you go. This, but I'm going to get that barbell and add some more weight. Yes. Um, so I'm really on a, uh, growing my strength right now. I'm I'm really motivated to do that because um, okay, I'll tell you the truth. Okay. Uh, my son, my son is just his wedding is back on for <laughs> a beach a beach destination oh. wedding in August. <laughs> okay, so it's crunch time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be lifting weights until August. You'll be sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. It's always good to have some like a goal to work towards or, you know, something that you're striving for. I think that that's super important. But that's, I mean, amazing, because I think a lot of people get scared and get kind of intimidated of, you know, lifting weights, whether it's going to like hurting themselves, or they just don't know where to start. Do you kind of program your own workouts? Or do you follow like a different program? Both, but okay. when I really want to get strong, I I often will sign up with an online trainer. Okay, and that works really well with me. Yeah, um, and right now I'm subscribing to you know we get workouts that we're doing together. Yeah, and that, that motivates me to join a program, and I'll do that every few years. Um, okay. You know, working with a personal trainer isn't something that's that affordable to everyone but it's something that i've done in spurts so yeah. i might do it for a few months and then um you know really learn a lot and get stronger and then you can maintain yeah and that i mean that's a, an important point because a lot i feel like a lot of times people do better like if you're feeling like you're in a plateau and really just kind of need something to kind of push you over the edge or you don't really know what to do, like you have some equipment, but you're not really sure what to do with it. Or especially when dealing with arthritis, you're not sure which movements are technically safe and which maybe you should avoid for now sort of thing. So I think that that's important, especially working in spurts, because then you kind of learn, and then you're able to carry some things out on your own. And then it's like, okay, I'm kind of, this is getting easy. Now I need something like to the next level. And so I think that that's a good way of definitely looking at it um, to kind of get a little bit of help, then go on your own and get a little bit of help. But it always helps working out with other people too. Yeah. A big <laughs> motivator, even for me. But, but I think that's, I mean, that's awesome that you've found people that can, you know, kind of, especially if you're not feeling it, then they're coming over. So you, <laughs> you yeah. better be out there. <laughs> um, I call my classes better together. Yeah. Cause it's, but I, I wanted to say something about arthritis. Um, you know, I have really pretty severe arthritis in my knees. But, you know, it, it doesn't feel worse when I work out. In fact, you know, I would argue that sometimes it feels worse if I if I pull back and don't work out as much. Yeah. But, but I've had an interesting thing with the toes in one of my feet one, okay. and my foot. So um, doing this whole COVID period, in fact, even for longer, I couldn't do reverse lunges on one foot okay. because it's just so painful. And I never talked to a doctor about it. I didn't, you know, but I thought, well, just, you know, this theory of mine is you sort of push it a tiny bit, but not to a point of, you know, it might be uncomfortable, but not, you know, excruciating pain. Right. But use it, keep trying. And so I've been doing that. So over the last six months, I bet I, I, I've done no weight or just a tiny little weight holding, you know, holding a tiny weight to do okay. the reverse lunge. And I, I, I feel like sometimes I could do it and sometimes I would have to hold on to something Yeah, because my toe hurt that much, but I stayed with it. And now the last three weeks I've been adding now, you know, a pretty decent weight. Okay. And I'm able, I'm able to do the reverse lunges with both legs because I really believe, even though I can't speak for it medically, I believe the fact that I just have continually done reverse lunges week after week or similar movements that my toes, the arthritis didn't go away, but 
um, I think that it's been good for my toes. I, yeah, and I mean, as long as it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. like I always tell people, as long as it doesn't significantly limit you or like if you did it one week and then you're just so sorry you can barely even like walk, then that is kind of a sign like, okay, something is probably wrong. That's your joint just saying, hey, this is too much for me right now. But then if it's just that little bit of discomfort, kind of that tolerable pushing through is totally, but there is a point where it's kind of that no pain, no gain is not really a thing. Um, <laughs> so as long as it's manageable and, you know, you don't pay for it later, then it's typically a, a good thing to kind of push through it and just kind of not stop every time you have, you know, just a little bit of pain is a big thing. Um but yeah, I mean, I'm glad that's working out because it seems like it wasn't a huge issue other than just the lunges, right? Yes, and it didn't really bother me walking around just in that one position, you know, it, with the lunger up on your yeah, toe. It's really bent, yeah. Yeah, and bent. But the thing is, um, you know, today I had someone in my class, she was new, and she's like, oh, I can't do lunges because of my toes. And I'm like, <laughs> like I just had that. <laughs> no, you have to be careful because I don't know her pain, but, right. but, but it's exciting to me that, you know, I can, I can work through uh, almost everything that's been uncomfortable. I've, yeah. I've just made progress in a lot of areas. In fact, I've had a lot of uh, stiffness recently, oh. just, uh, you know, but as soon as I exercised this morning, just it goes yeah. yeah, I mean, it's definitely the whole motion is lotion sort of thing, um, but definitely just kind of finding a good balance because then on the other side of the spectrum, like doing too much can also be, um, you know, it can cause more pain or things like that. So it's kind of all about finding a balance, which it sounds like you have definitely found. There is one other thing I wanted to touch on. Um, it's just nutrition. Now, I just kind of want to touch on it just really briefly as far as like, do you follow like a specific diet sort of thing? Um, do you supplement with protein? Is there anything that's kind of changed since you've been strength training um, or getting there sort of thing? Anything about your nutrition um, that you think would help other people kind of in this position? Well, I think as uh, um, in my age group, or, you know, people close by, mm -hmm. um, we grew up on, you know, it was uh, low fat <laughs> or low, what was it? Oh, we, we, yeah, high carbs, low fat at first. Yeah. And then it was low carb, you know, it switches around. I know it's been a great. <laughs> I, I had so much, so many problems yo yo when I was trying to lose weight with my weight yo yoing because I could yeah. lose weight, but I wasn't changing my eating habits okay i was sort of like diet and then diet sort of things yeah so what i finally did was i just started immersing myself in the topic of eating healthy even though i wasn't yeah you know, i was watching some documentaries and reading books and just trying to get my brain thinking about what do healthy eaters eat okay and then i made a five-year plan that okay. mostly eat healthy food and mo when I feel like it. But if there's a donut or a piece of cake, I'm never going to pass up anything like that again. <laughs> but I want it. Right, you know? right. And I think that's that's been 15 years, maybe more, of eating that way. But I'd say my fitness pal has been – and tracking food in it with any kind of, um, you know, it doesn't have to be an app. It could be other ways, but. Right. They do make it easy though on my fitness pal. <laughs> and, and then it's not just calories. It's uh, the new macros. <laughs> you Absolutely. Know, but, but a lot of people, you know, they're like, what are macros, you know, but really it's just protein, carb and fats and how much are you eating? And when you use a system of, watching what you eat and then tracking it, you get educated. Absolutely. And it's like, oh my gosh, a banana? <laughs> and I'm not going to not eat bananas, but I know if I've had that banana, 
it's going to be, I'm going to cut back on carbohydrates in other places during the day. And then yeah. where, what I, am I going to eat? And it, I'm going to make sure I get enough protein. And I think that's a place where a lot of women I know, they'll be start eating better and I'll be salads. And I'm like, that's all you had today. Right. You need some protein on there. Yeah. You're like, I'm really good. I had a salad with walnuts and feta cheese. And I'm like, well, you know, there's a little protein, but. Exactly. So do you use any like protein supplements or does all of your protein kind of come from natural sources? Well, I'm sort of a lazy uh, eater and I, you know, so for breakfast, I, I often have a protein smoothie. Okay. Okay. For me, it's just a really great way to have, make sure I put a little bit of yogurt. Okay. So I'm getting the yogurt, the protein powder, and um, a little almond milk. So it's not real high carb, a little yeah. bit of fruit. Okay. And berries. And so that's just already I've had probably 25 grams yeah. of protein for breakfast. Yeah. Out of oatmeal. Which yeah. is, um, and I'm trying to minimize milk. I don't know, you know, that's another yeah. Thing, but Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of personal choices, but I feel like <clears throat> what this kind of embodies is that you don't have to follow some super strict diet. And I know that some people do kind of flourish when they have like a strict plan, but kind of in the, my fitness pal is interesting. Um, because I used to track macros for a little while. Um, but essentially, I mean, for the people that don't know, you essentially put in the food, the foods that you eat, you can scan a barcode. I mean, it's super easy. And then what it does is it shows you your percentages of protein, fat, carbohydrates. And so I always encourage people just to kind of put in a normal day and see what it is. Because a lot of times we think we're getting enough protein. We think, oh, I don't eat very many carbs. But then when you start putting some of those things in, it's like, oh, I am definitely not kind of where I thought I was. And it kind of grounds you a little bit. And then you kind of can find that balance um, from there. But I think it's huge because a lot, like I said, a lot of times people think that they're doing what they should be, but really they might be lacking somewhere, which can be important, especially when you're strength training especially as you get older, a lot of people don't eat a lot of protein. Um, and so that's can be a really hard thing to do. Um, well, but as a personal trainer, uh -huh. I think it's hilarious because I have never met anyone who said, did not say this. I really eat healthy. Right. <laughs> so everyone thinks they're following a really healthy diet and they know, you know, they know they met, might, have cake or you know overeats or whatever but right, right. mostly they eat healthy but I, I don't think there's any measurement there on the healthy so if it's if it's not enough uh, you know if it's not balanced in those three food mm -hmm. groups it's really not healthy <laughs> exactly because I mean we've just kind of viewed healthy as like oh you're not eating like desserts like you just mentioned or you know, you're eating a salad or something like that. But you could be surprised when you put that in. And it's like, oh, you know, that's not we're not hitting this. We're lacking a lot of even nutrients and things like that. And so I think that that's definitely important um, to really just kind of look at and see kind of where you are. And then you can get some, some direction on where you need to go. But it's definitely like a good thing to at least see you how you're eating and kind of get some perspective on that healthy before, you know, we just kind of assume like, Oh, I can't lose weight. I'm eating healthy. I'm, you know, but are you doing the right exercise? Are you eating the right things? And so there's a lot that definitely goes into it. Well, I would say there's one other thing I would mention about um, the whole topic of being healthy <laughs> or fit. <laughs> and that is we've talked about strength training, but really having some sort of um, rigorous uh, cardio can really be life, life changing. And yeah. so I've always, I started with spin when I was trying to strengthen my legs to help my knees. Mm -hmm. And it was really hard. And it's it, when I do spin, it's still, it's always really hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's different ways you can get sort of, 
some really high and a little bit of intensity in that cardio, like pedaling faster on a stationary bike or walking faster or putting hills in your workout, but putting in some rigorous cardio is one aspect of fitness. And I think also balance and agility, you know, sort of, and I know working with you on the one video we did together, you did have agility because we were, moving side to side and quickly yes and we had balance in there so that and and we got our heart rates up yeah so it's an important those are important aspects of fitness yes absolutely <laughs> it's i always tell people it's kind of all about variety if we just kind of stick to one thing you're likely missing out on something else and so we kind of need some that's where a lot of people need direction is a lot of people like walk when you ask if they exercise, it's, yes, I walk, but you're also neglecting a lot of other muscles because we're not getting that variety. Um, and so that's definitely one of those cardio pieces that you had mentioned, like spinning and stuff. That's awesome because you can add some resistance, but it's also that repetitive motion. And so kind of incorporating some of that other variety is definitely kind of one of the things that I have found the most success with, with the people that I've worked with, um, but that you're also doing, I mean, lots of different things and lots of different movements. And that's, I mean, kind of the bread and butter. And I think the key to working out with arthritis, but also just kind of losing weight and having your body constantly kind of guessing and that sort of thing. When I first became a personal trainer, so that was almost, well, eight years ago or however many, <laughs> <Can't just. laughs> but um, I remember in our training, we had to do the l agility ladder. Yeah. Jump in and out. And it was yep. like, my brain was exploding. Like how, you know, cause we do all, <laughs> all these young people and I, I was like, what are my feet? What, what did you say to do? <laughs> you know? And now I just came to really, pretty quick on yeah. my, and isn't that amazing it's like oh yeah faster in my movements now than I was at 66 so I, I mean, that's that's really cool but it's come with doing it all the time doing movements that are make you move fast yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And constantly kind of changing that coordination and all of that stuff, because we don't normally get that. That doesn't t technically get challenged a lot just do it during the day, because you're pretty much kind of walking um, forward for the most part and then kind of moving occasionally side to side. But we don't get a lot of that kind of complex, complicated coordination. So that kind of tends to decline, too. And yeah, so, which can lead to, you know, falls if it gets too bad and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's super important. One thing that uh, I did, one of the gyms where I worked, they put, you know, I was new and I had the afternoon shift, which of course was like, no people came into the gym or, you know, it was, hard, it was really hard to get clients. So I started a class for seniors or, you know. Okay. And it, it turned out, it's still going today, which is oh, wow. you know, okay. seven years later or whatever. So, and we did it right inside the gym instead of in a classroom. So okay. they were, the ladies were like, what? You know, medicine balls and things they'd never seen before. It was really yeah. fun. But I also started a class, a chair exercise class. Okay. And that was also motivating because um sadly um you know once people get to that point it's really hard to make really big changes so it was really motivating to me to work with people to when i design my classes uh -huh. we, up and down on the floor i try to do every other exercises on the floor standing up on the floor standing up but just wanting people to be able to do those movements that will prevent them. Oh, there's my phone. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, it'll prevent them from get. I don't know how to do that. There. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it 
I don't, you don't want to end up there, I'm telling you. Right, right. And so that's kind of where the preventative stuff comes in, kind of the, you know, one, it's never too late to start, but two, you don't want to get to that point where it's, you know, even harder to get going or, you know, you see results a lot slower. That's so I always tell people kind of don't dig your hole too deep because the longer you wait, the deeper that hole gets and it's harder to climb out of it. Um, and so, I mean, you can start, you know, at any age in any condition, but it's going to be harder depending on how much you ignore it and how much you kind of put it off and that sort of thing. And it's easier, you know, I think obviously in middle age than it is as you yeah. get to your sixties and seventies. Yeah. Yeah. So. But there are lots of good resources like you who do, um So tell me a little bit more about your business and kind of you do classes. Like how can people get in touch with you? How can people find you? Okay. Um, well, before I just want to finish what I just said about starting in your 70s. I, I've mentioned to you the woman train with Joan on Instagram. Yes. So I should, I should mention she started – very overweight at 70. Yes. And now she's like a power lifter. So yeah, I, know. <laughs> I don't mean to say you're doomed if you're in your seventies. I wanted to be right. Clear. And I mean, that's a totally valid point because yeah. like I said, I mean, it, there's, you, it's never too late to start, but you don't want to dig that hole too deep because <laughs> it is, I mean, I guarantee she put in like a ton of work and I mean, we, only see kind of the end part and she does show a little bit of the kind of the middle and kind of the beginning but I guarantee it's a lot harder than kind of what she shows um, right. so I think it's super inspirational too that she started even later and then you know is able to do these things that nobody really ever thought was possible yeah. So back to your other question, um, where can people reach me? I think it was. <laughs> so um, my name is Mary Rawls and my business is called Fit for Rest of Your Life, which, uh, you know, because I started at such an older age, it's a perfect yeah. name. Yeah, it's going to be from here on out. We're going to be fit. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but I'm just have a small presence. Okay. There. Uh, Mary in her 70s. <laughs> okay. And um, Facebook. And okay. um, you have a website, right? Pardon me? You have a website? And a website. Fit okay. for your life. Because yeah. I will um, put some of those links below so that people can find you. Um, I highly recommend if you're watching to go follow her, get mm -hmm. some inspiration. She has a YouTube channel as well. And we actually just did a collaboration of a beginner series. And we're hoping to kind of tag team an intermediate and an advanced. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see all the stages that, you know, we don't just have to do easy things. I mean, we can do as hard exercises, super challenging things once you can kind of get there to join us for that. But I'm hoping that we can get together for both of those. Um, and then if anybody has any questions while you're watching or if you're catching us on the replay, go ahead and just put the comments in the um, comments below this video because then we can both kind of reach out and may, I can make sure that Mary sees them so that way she can answer any questions that you might have. But I am so glad that we were able to connect and we were able to kind of, you were able to share your story and hopefully motivate a few people in this group to really kind of kick it into gear and get started. Um, is there any kind of last, last statement or la anything you want to say to the people of this group that maybe are looking for some motivation, looking for some inspiration and dealing with arthritis, any final words for us? Good. Oh, that's good. Yes. Um, well, first, first of all, move, right? <laughs> Just move. And, uh, when I decided to change, I um, I said to myself that I would make exercise the most important thing I did every day. And I would do it six days a week and five minutes would count. But yeah. 
anything would count, but I would do it without fail six days a week. And I've now, it's been almost 20 years and I've never been so consistent in my life as I have been at this stage in life. So it's making exercise the most important thing that you do every day. And I think that is an awesome way to end. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll be catching up even more because um, Mary is also a member of this group. So if you want to ask her anything, feel free to post it in the group and then we can kind of, uh, I'll make sure that she sees it. But I just want to say thank you so much. And I will put all of your links in the comments down below. So if you're interested in checking out, I will also put our video that we did down in the comments as well. So that way you can kind of see that. Um, but like I said, any questions, let us know. But I just want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. And I want to thank Mary for being here and sharing her incredible story. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their night. Thank you. This is yeah. really fun being here. Yes, absolutely. All right, guys. See you later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.